bring in Bucky Helwig. He helps manage $17 billion as Senior Vice President at BB&T Wealth Management. He joins us now from Birmingham, Alabama. Bucky, welcome back to Bloomberg News. Always good to have you on. And I know you were listening to Dominic Chu and to Joe Bersuelas. First, I wanted to get your comments, these concerns, these fears, if you will, of a double dip. Is that warranted? Mark, thanks for having me back. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Yes, I think they are. As, as uh, both the people in the discussion said, there is this concern of a double dip. How it translates into the investor's psyche is that in addition to the uh, earnings, which is, as you said, have been somewhat disappointing, uh, in addition to that, the, the, uh, the uh, bar, if you will, to beat was very low. I heard one gentleman, one colleague say it was said about as high as a limbo bar. <laughs> but uh, the, the earnings have been disappointing, um, and it's all factored on the, on, on the uh, uh, point that top-line growth is difficult to achieve. And because of that, uh, the weak economic data, the housing data, it's going to be a, a lot of dismal data points for housing this week. Uh, we already had the one this morning. The LEI, the leading indicator index coming out later this week is probably going to be negative based on surveys that Bloomberg has done. There's just no daylight in the economy. So yes, this concern of a double dip, a slow growth environment right. is, is a very significant yeah. uh, point for equity investors. Hey, Bucky, this is Joe Bruce You know, I, I hear what you're saying about a recession. I run a, uh, a model that the Fed runs looking at the 10-year minus the three-month in order to assess the mm -hmm. probability of a recession. Now, if you look at that model, it signals no probability. I mean, no probability of a recession. And I think one of the things that many mm -hmm. viewers out there, unless they're very you know, elite professionals like yourself, they don't realize just how blind we're flying right now. Because of the Fed's quantitative easing, we don't see that flattening in the yield curve that you might normally see that would accompany these, these economic and financial conditions. What are you looking at specifically that tells you we really ought to be on the lookout for a double dip? Well, the steepness of the yield curve, like you indicated in your analysis, is really not pointing to a recession. However, uh, what I'm looking at specifically is that two-year yield, and money is flooding into there. Uh, cash today is an asset of choice. It buys flexibility and safety. For a business, it makes more sense to put money into cash as opposed to equipment or new hires. So I look at the flight to safety. I look at some of the uh, psychology that's out there on the street. Some of it's anecdotal, anecdotal in talking with clients and uh, institutional clients, individual clients. There yeah. just is no daylight out there. Yeah. And while we may dodge a statistical double dip, right. the outlook right now is not that attractive. Hey, Bu Bucky, it's Dominic here. I mean, we, we've been talking a lot about real estate and everything else here, but let's get it right down to our viewers here. It's about jobs, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, anecdotally speaking, especially in the South where you are, Delta Airlines possibly posting 1,000 airport jobs for which they expect 65,000 applications for those mm -hmm. thousand jobs. I mean, do we get out of this jobs picture anytime soon? I don't think we do until there, there is clear incentive, either in the form of uh, a, a clear tax policy, more clarity on regulatory policy, to create an incentive for a business, large or small, to say, yes, I'm going to invest in another person because there is profit potential there. So until those things uh, uh, lighten up, until we see potential for growth, it makes sense to hold cash and to hunker down if, right. if you're in business, uh, large or small. And that the, uh, the, the thing you mentioned about uh, Delta, uh, I'll give you another example. I have a friend who's a high school hockey coach, and he has had a career in retailing. He applied for a job to manage a Dick's Sporting Goods store, and there were 65 equally uh, yeah. qualified applicants that applied for that one position. So it's, wow. it's, uh, it's tough throughout the economy. Bucky, in our last 30 seconds, are stocks rallying? on the chance that uh, Republicans may take back the House of Representatives? Are you getting a sense of a political play here? I think there is a political play, and it, it doesn't necessarily refer in the mind of investors to uh, one side versus the other, but that historically gridlock in that uh, uh, you have a, a one party in the White House and one party in Congress historically has proven better for equity markets. Right. So to the extent that there is a, a gridlock emerging, 
I, I think that that would be a positive for the equity markets. All right. Bucky Helwig joining us from Birmingham, also joined by our Dominic Chu and our senior economist, Joe Bersuelas. Gentlemen, thank you all so much. We appreciate it. Well